Welcome to our 2024 Canadian Grand Prix predictions. I'm Sagan and I'm joined in once again. Welcome, Ajax. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? To- how are you today? I'm not very good, but hopefully the predictions are going to improve. <laughs> yes, yes. We can't do as bad as we did last time. Let's be honest. Yeah, indeed. We we got, like, <laughs> we got three points combined last time. I think. So. Yeah. Oh. Oh. High scoring rounds, high scoring rounds. Yeah, that's the one uh, Grand Prix that Lebanon could have outscored us. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of news recently, though, though, in F1, specifically yeah. in the last hour, I will say. Yeah, yeah. So maybe yeah. you haven't seen it, you've seen it. Good, good, good. Where, do, where does the, the regulations? Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. I think we can always talk about those. Um, so that the the cars getting smaller, obviously that's always a positive. That they're getting lighter, which is even better. Uh, DRS is gone, I think. Uh, yeah, active aero with half of the engine being uh, well electric, and that's like all the details I know. So if you know more, then you obviously can can say a. Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm I'm just as aware as you. I think. Uh... Yeah, the Axe TRS is the big, the big thing for me. Obviously, they're trying to make it smaller, but uh, they've also got rid of DRS. Uh, well, they say smaller. They've just made them. They've told you you have to make it uh, less weighty, shall we say? Yeah. Uh, and I think there's stuff about batteries and so on. Very, very. Uh, you know, it's just so on and so forth. And now there's something called mum. Or manual override mode instead oh. of uh, DRS, so that that's going to be fun. Yeah, <laughs> there are so many jokes about it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Right. The the energy boost when it comes to overtaking, it's I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work, but hopefully it's um, it's going to be a good alternative to DRS, which obviously um, rec- in the recent years. DRS has been the only way of overtaking, and yeah, the, the regulations are probably going to help with that. Obviously, uh, um, smaller cars with less weight always helps. But this uh, alternative to DRS, if it works better than DRS itself, is only going to be better for for the fans. Obviously, more racing. Yeah, uh, if the grid uh, if the grid stays this close to the new regulations, which hopefully it does, even though the new regs uh, mostly just extend the grid, as we as we saw in 2022, where uh, uh, at the end of the regulations, we, we kind of had a lot of cars close to each other, but then 2022 came and we had like, uh, yeah, yeah, we had a lot of teams, uh, more than half a second off. Obviously, it got bunched up again. Uh, this year is very close, probably the closest in Formula One history. But uh, yeah, twenty twenty six. Hopefully, close racing and yeah, better, better close improved racing. That's all we can hope for. Yes, for sure. Uh, uh, but I think that's the only really big news. Before I mean, the uh, uh, songs Mercedes are going to. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> You forgot. I forgot the other big news, yes, yep. yes. And, and news that I was not looking, I did not think this was about to happen. Yep, uh, a lot of people were caught off guard by it. Uh, do you want to take it away or should I? Oh, you can. Sergio Perez has somehow got another contract with Red Bull. Uh, I'll be honest, I was literally talking to my brother on Monday about how I really think they should bring in Yuki, and if they don't bring in Yuki, Yuki needs to move straight away and uh yeah now, now they've announced that yeah paris is getting another year that means sites will not have a seat uh or in a top team uh it doesn't look like uh yuki will either you know it means that daniel is still probably confined confined to that uh torosso or whatever you want to call it rb racing and yeah this is this is big obviously there's there's only one seat left in the Mercedes now, uh, if you're a big driver. And it just depends on, I, I can't think who might get that. I mean, it'll be, yeah, there's certainly be a lot of people vying for that big seat in Mercedes, especially because there's rumours they're going to be the quickest in 2026. 
But uh, obviously, we've only just seen the uh, launch of the cars. I'm not sure why people are already jumping to that conclusion. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, how, how do you feel about Paris? Especially after like the last two Grand Prix have been weak weeks for him. Um, on one hand, I I really really would like to see a new driver alongside Max, especially Yuki. Who I mean, I mean, you cannot say a bad thing about Yuki ever since like the half of 2023 especially after that uh he's just been better than ricardo like almost every single race there's like with some expect exceptions where ricardo actually found his talent and was good for one session in every once in a three months or whatever <laughs> yeah um yuki has been very consistent very very quick and yep uh been getting better in temper as well which has been one of his biggest problems uh we don't really hear too many angry radios anymore he's just getting more complete and more more valuable as a driver i think and it's really really tough to see uh him not getting the chance that a lot of other drivers like we saw gasly and album being promoted pretty early where you key has yes. been in his third or fourth season in formula one now and he's still not getting given the chance. I I don't really get the point of that second Red Bull team anymore. Um, if they don't promote their drivers, so yeah, I, I think Yuki should move as soon as possible. Like I, after the announcement, I'm pretty sure he contacted uh, his managers, contacted him, and yeah, they're gonna try to look as elsewhere. Obviously, with the seats, uh, open has Williams, Alpine. Even even Mercedes, I don't think that's uh, that's a real option. But yeah, hopefully. No, no. Yeah. I do not know. I don't know where he'll go. I I I hope it is a big team. You know what? I wouldn't put it past it whilst they wait on uh, Antonelli to maybe prove his stuff in the lower F one group. I wouldn't put it past them to chuck. Uh, a bone to Yuki Sonoda, get him in for a year, but we shall see. It, it, yeah, it's, it, it just feels huge that they've decided this already. And, uh, you know, he's fifth in the championship. Yeah. It seemed like he's second, uh, and they, they look like they're getting slower, so got to be a worry. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to give him a contract is, is just big. I mean, he's not won a race this year, has he? Uh, no, no. His last win is uh, is back in 2023, so that's more than a year ago. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just feels feels hugely significant. Um, and there'll be a lot of uh, drivers on the, on the market shaking their heads and going... Well, I could have done what he did. Yeah. Um, obviously, to, uh, Perez, yeah, so. yeah, obviously Perez brings in value to the team, with especially with uh, the marketable value of a Mexican driver. Obviously, a lot of sponsors backing him. Uh, m- actually, the the ma- majority of uh, Red Bull Racing merchandise sales, I think, are based on Checo. And yeah, the commercial value of Jacko is definitely huge. But I don't think yeah. that's one of the like the biggest reasons. I think Christian Horner also wants some stability on the team, uh, especially after the, the news at the start of the season with with the investigation and so on. Like, uh, yeah, 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 they definitely need some stability in the team. And yeah, uh, yes, I don't, you know, there's, there's a lot of rumors about Max going to Mercedes as well. Yeah. I don't really feel like that's true, but yeah, no, I don't think I don't think it's true. But as you say, stability, yeah, definitely would not boost the stability with uh, bringing Carl Sainz, who obviously uh, would want to prove himself. Obviously, uh, we kind of uh, teammates before, haven't yeah, they? we we kind of know that the teammate relationship wouldn't be the best, and especially with the team uh, in the background with. Both of their dads not liking each other, it probably would be even worse. Just not very good. In terms of Yuki, I don't feel like they want to give Yuki a chance 
Uh, well, I, I, I think that Marco might be yeah, uh, responsible I, for that one. Yeah, I think I think they they pass on Yuki after the first season. I, I don't really feel like they ever consider him as an option. They're just keeping him the second seat until a lot of new uh, young drivers come in from F2. Uh, that's probably my idea. I, I have no idea why uh, the likes of Ricardo stays in the in the team. If they want to re-sign both drivers, both UK and Daniel, I, I, I have no idea what that team is anymore. Like, is it the is it the uh, just a ad banner for for companies? Like, stick your sort of company name in the in the team name, and that's that's it, that's the team now. Or <laughs> is the junior team? I, I just don't know. It's it's very weird. Uh, yeah, they are they sponsored by Cash Up. Yep, <laughs> Visa and Cash Up. Yeah, the, the incredible, <laughs> incredible team name. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. Uh, well, we'll we'll call it Toro Rosso for uh, for our series anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, yes. Yeah, the 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 delivery resembles Toro Rosso, so that's at least one good thing. I mean, the delivery is, you know. It's not the the best lever on the grid, but I I think it's among the the better ones, in my opinion. So yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. Um, I guess we, we, we shall we, move we, to the predictions because <laughs> there are uh, twelve minutes of uh, well, not more. Important yeah, it, obviously important, yeah. but it's not the main topic of the video. Switching to the spreadsheet, so I don't forget. Um, predictions: Canadian Grand Prix. We're coming off the back of the. Uh, uh, well, now Red Bull in the top five, which was, uh, I mean, <laughs> who could have expected that after Max getting seven or I think it was seven pole positions in a row and suddenly P6 in qualifying Monaco. We're looking for a, for a race that's not, uh, we're not looking at a, as a race as we did before, uh, obviously. Uh, we knew Max was going to win every single race like at the start of the season, but then obviously the Carl Sainz win, we kinda, we're asking ourselves, is there a child of a title fight? Maybe. But then the Norris win came, and obviously Imola, Toronto, the Red Bull is vulnerable in multiple circuits. Monaco now, Red Bull was arguably the third quickest car, maybe even fourth if... Uh, Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. If you think that the, that was the max pace of Red Bull, which obviously Max made a lot of mistakes during the lap, I, you never know. Uh, so yeah, very bad weekend for Monaco for Red Bull, and Canada is not supposed to be a good circuit for them either. Uh, Charles is no. Charles is closing in the championship. Obviously, we have the constructors battle even closer. Yeah. Yep, it could be could be interesting. So, so yeah, uh, after a long time. We may be actually interested in our predictions, and it may just not be Max P1 every single time, which is a good thing, a very good thing. It would be, yes. All right. Want to start? Uh, I don't mind. I can start, but I might just go back on your statement and put that extra stuff in, in P1. Okay, buddy. <laughs> we need to take the risks. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, uh, yep. I it, ruined your whole spiel there. About the <laughs> one. I, I know it's not. Look, it, it doesn't look amazing for them recently, but I don't know. I just feel like Red Bull can sometimes just pull out something from the bag. I think they, they've got it here. Where things look like, hey, it, maybe it's going to get exciting now. I think Red Bull come and ruin that. For me every single time and i'm i'm willing to bet that that happens here today as well yep definitely um okay uh max for pole position is a very good pick since he got well seven out of eight pole position this year <laughs> right uh, true that, true so that. yeah but i'm i'm keeping keeping uh myself in hope i'm actually gonna go for a driver right. that, that you don't think i would pick I'm gonna go with Oscar Piastri for his first pole position in his career. Ooh, and nice. yeah, I'm I'm definitely in a very I mean you probably have a bigger chance, let's let's be real. But yeah. Piastri 
has outqualified Lando in the past three races. He's qualified in the, mm. I think in P5 for Miami, then P2 for both Imola and Monaco with, obviously, with the penalty in Imola, he is under P5, but qualified P2 for both Imola and Monaco. It could be just a one little bit, one bit, little bit of more luck that brings in the first pole position, because definitely he has the pace and yeah, uh, I just believe it. it's going to happen this race. Piastri for pole. Nice, nice. I was about to put Norris next, and I'm going to stick to my word. I'm going to put Norris next. Uh, you are correct. You know what? Piastri would be pretty solid at qualifying this season. But I, I'm just going to go with Norris. Maybe it's a British buyer style of thing. I just feel he's going to be quick on this circuit. I feel like he's going to be hunting Max, just like he was in Imola. I feel that might just end up being the case. Yeah, really fair. Uh, I probably on the realistic side, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. stick to well, uh, copium, I guess. <laughs> okay, my P two, Charles Leclerc. Yep, uh, on the back of a win in Monaco, obviously mm. from Paul to win uh, his first win since Austria 2022. He yeah. will get P two in qualifying. I've got signs that won last year. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. In, in, in seeing, I thought I thought uh, McCurd won once last year, but no, you're right. So so many sites once, wasn't it? Yep. Um, talking of which, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a few risks here. I'm not going to put sites in P3. He really needs to start vying for his seat. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm basically putting. You know, the people that have been worse than their opposites so far this season. But I think, uh, yeah, I think he could. I think he could do it. Yep. Um, very, very, very decent pick. Uh, Science obviously had a very good start of the season. Kind of dropped off in the recent races, but definitely has it in him to be Charles and qualifying. I, I have no doubts. Um, my IP3 would be max. I don't feel like I'm going to put him any lower than third. It just, it just feels really bad to <laughs> put max at the top three. Uh, so yeah, P3 for, for max. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, God. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complete it out here. Uh, I'm going to go out with Leclerc next. I think he'll have a very solid race once again. Uh, well, obviously he won last time, but yeah, I think Leclerc is going to have a good race this time. Uh, even if he's behind his team, I just feel like... Yeah, well, I just... I, I want to include him. Okay. And I had the Jets, so... <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, if Ferrari is the second quickest car, you're kind of getting close there, so... Yeah, never know. Um... I'm gonna go with Lando. Uh, honestly, this is uh, a yeah. pretty straightforward. I I don't feel like Piastri is gonna outqualify him by that much. I feel like it's gonna be very close. That's why I'm putting two drivers between them. But I don't feel like it's gonna be like a uh, huge cap. So yeah, still P4 for Lando, but the first pole for Piastri. Nice. I think. I think we're going to have the same top five in different orders because I'm going to put Piastri next. Uh, I was going to risk a Mercedes pick because I think they might be quite quick this weekend. But I am still going to go Piastri because I think uh, the Red Bulls are very quick around that circuit. Okay. okay fair. Um, I'm actually not going to go with what you thought. I'm going to go with the pick that you uh, You didn't want to pick. I'm gonna go for Lewis Hamilton P5. Um, this may be very bold in uh, for, from my perspective, but uh, I, f I feel like Canada is one of the circuits that Hamilton is very good at. He's obviously won his first Grand Prix here. Last year he showed that uh, he was well clear for Russell that uh, in that weekend. Uh, obviously battling with Fernando for for P2 in the race. It's one one of those circuits that you can count on Hamilton doing well in, like every single time. So yeah, I just feel like a cheeky Hamilton P five in qualifying. Yeah, no, I like it. I love it. I love it. I mean, I really wish I could have kept. I would have put Russell in. 
uh, just because he looks to have been stronger recently, especially in quality. Uh, but I really did want to include one of the Mercedes, so I big ups for doing it. <laughs> um, of course, that means you don't think science will qualify well. But that means different top, top fives between us, which is quite nice. Uh, okay, up next, actual race. Uh, again, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna go safe for this step, and I feel like I want to try and pick up some points. So I'm going to uh, get a few. Right, <laughs> but, but I think for step, and I, I do think he might win. You know, right. it's it's for step, and he's done very well so far this season. One blip in Monaco isn't going to put me off. Obviously. <laughs> Australia also exists, but that wasn't his fault. Yeah. Whereas I think you can you can blame Monaco on him. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, don't, I don't think Red Bull had the pace in Monaco for a pole position. So, yeah. All right. Well, true, but you know. Yeah. Okay. I still think you can blame Monaco for him. You know, Fair. Max Verstappen. He he's proven before yeah. around Monaco to be incredibly incredibly quick. Yeah. He wasn't that far off far away in the end. Yeah, he was, was like, like, like two and a half times of second, I think. He was very close like between one and a half. With like Lando, Sainz, Russell, and Verstappen. I think they were all like within a tenth of a second or maybe yeah. even less. So, yeah. Fair enough, um, fair enough. Yeah, I'm happy to be pretty wrong. Right. Um, well, since we're kind of points, I should probably go uh, with Safer, but I'm not. I'm going to pull on Copium. Charles Leclerc will get back to back wins. Yep, back to back win for Charles Leclerc. While I'm equal in points with you, <laughs> it is a very risky move. But um, I want to hope for a title fight. I just, I just need it. No, uh, we, we, we've been start of a of a battle since the well, the first third of the 2022 season. It's been a long while. Yeah, we need some, we need some excitement. I, I'm ready for it. You are being optimistic, I am being pessimistic, I would, I would say is our difference here. Uh, and yeah. next, for me, it's going to be Lando Norris, same reasons as the qualifying. I just think he's a man on form recently, obviously won a race himself recently as well. Uh, I think he's going to be very quick this weekend. All right. All right. I think, he was, I think he was the quickest person in the field as well, in Monaco. Do you? During the race, yeah, I do. Okay, I mean, and, and, and literally, look, look at look at the whole race. They were just scared. Uh, the red uh, Ferrari was just scared of Norris the entire time. I, Not that he'd overtake, uh, but he'd ruin the race. Yeah, I don't. For, I don't know if Monica should count towards that because we obviously saw everyone driving like ten seconds of the pace. So uh, it was. It was not. I don't feel like it was very representative of the actual pace of the drivers. Um, so yeah, that might just be my opinion. Um, yeah, P two, my P two. I'm gonna stick with Oscar. I think he's gonna get another podium. Uh, obviously, second podium in a row would that be? So um, yeah, Oscar, Oscar hype train for me for some reason. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, very reminiscent. Um... Uh, did you watch last time when I made the predictions? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Uh, did I you see you... My, strat- my strategy in Monaco of putting different drivers in different places oh, yeah. in oh. the top 10? Yeah, so uh, I'm not going to follow that this time around, but I am going to put Charles Leclerc up next because, like you, I think he's done well recently. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, and yeah, well, he has done well recently, but I just don't think the Ferrari is as quick on the circuit. Yeah, pr- pretty fair. Um, yeah, um, good opinion. Uh, probably yeah, kid, probably you have, a, you, have a have a bigger chance of points. But yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just I don't know what what's wrong with me, but I'm just gonna believe and no no Red Bull podium twice in a row. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'd like to believe that as well. Yeah, I'm just as as I say, you're you're the optimistic one yeah. in this. Uh, this is today. 
this may not be optimism anymore. This may be just a big old delusion. But <laughs> yeah, you know, as long as we're having fun, at least before before the Dutch anthem on Sunday, I'm, I'm, I'm glad with it. All right, uh, we are P4. Well, the Dutch out, so that was, that was a good, that was good, that was good. Oh, sorry, I thought you hadn't done your paper. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, um, what was my P4? I'm going to put Piastri in P4. Uh, again, it's just the, ooh, that's not how you do it. That's how you do it. Um, <laughs> it's just uh, trying to make sure that I cover bases now. Uh, I think Piastri will have a good race. It's just in case he has a better race than Science, which I think he has done recently. Obviously, he only took Science in the pit stops in Imola. Uh, I think he can do that again, or something similar to it in Canada. I really hope this race is interesting as well, because Canada has proven to be an interesting race over the past few years, despite uh, F1's lack of interest, shall we say. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, the one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the weather forecast for, for the Canadian Grand Prix, which looks like it's gonna, well, uh, it's not gonna, it's not, doesn't say it's gonna rain, but there's a, like a 50% chance of rain for every single session, which could be definitely interesting. Um, so, we could see some chaos. Yep. Last year we saw Hulkenberg in P2 in qualifying, that was interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Oh, true, I forgot. So, I'll, uh, for, for I don't my... think he was in P2 in a different race as well. Uh, yeah, it, it was running in P2 uh, for the Austria sprint. Like, there you um, go. Thank you, thank you. Unfortunately, got only P6, but yeah, it's the Haas on the stars last year. Maybe if it was this year, he could have got a, a sprint podium, which would still make him a driver with no podiums, but it would still count on some level. Um, yep, yeah, I'm... I'm just going to hope that the uh, EOD team brings in a super quick car in 2026 and Hulkamer gets a podium, at least one. Um, and that's when I can definitely uh, die in peace. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My P4 would... Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick Max, whatever. Um, it's kind of hang out of the top P4 four. is crazy. Yeah, it's actually... Mm. like. Yeah, I'm I'm extremely bull, and I don't really feel like P4 is a is a position that Max could actually finish in. It's like it feels so unrealistic. Right? I'm putting in. in Bear there. in mind as well that Monaco is quite a slow technical track, and there's aspects of that in Canada. There definitely is, but it's also a track with two straights, or well, three straights. Yep. Three straights, three DRS zones. Oh, definitely a lot of straights on the in Canada. It's like a <laughs> straight, a chicane, a turn, a, a straight, and another chicane. It's, just, it's a very simple track, but... It could, sounds like you were describing a uh, Monza. Well, it's, uh, it, it's just, isn't it similar? <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, like, turn one, it's a chicane, then it's a turn, uh, a little straight, uh, another chicane, then... Yeah. Well, another chicken after that is a straight chicken, straight turn. It's just the entire circuit. So, yeah. Um, okay. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, your P5. It's all right. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Russell just to uh, counterbalance your Hamilton prediction from Ernest. Okay. Well, well, Mercedes, Mercedes Believer as well. I like it. I just think he'll be quicker than Hamilton this weekend. I wanted to put one in at least a position of uh, a good position for uh, this weekend at one point, and it makes sense to do Russell in the race. So uh, there you go. Yep. Uh, fair, fair enough. Um, yeah, my Hamilton pick was mostly based on that Canada just seems to be like one of those circuits when you can extract the most out of the car. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Because, yeah, I think he beat Russell in both uh, both times they were in Canada, both together, if I remember correctly. No, I did not know that. So, so yeah, I just believe Hamilton could be the deciding factor this weekend. Uh, normally, I would pick Russell probably because he's be, been the better driver this season. Uh, but yeah, uh, P5 for me, I'm unfortunately not going to stick with my Mercedes. I'm going to pick signs there. 
for uh, for Ooh, okay, okay. for some good constructors points against Red Bull. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, very similar throughout, but uh, there you go. Uh, fastest lap. Uh, this is a difficult one because I have no idea. Probably be someone that pits late. Um, onto soft. I'm gonna go out and punt, put a punt on Piastri, shall we say? Uh, yeah. proven they got fastest lap in, was it Imola? Mm, yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It was, so I'm just gonna put yeah. that, you know. I think it was, uh, it was like Miami that he got the fastest lap because he pitted at the end and unfortunately couldn't get it to points. Um, yep, yeah, uh, Fastest lab is very difficult to predict, honestly. It just, it's completely roulette, but so I'm, I'm gonna pick uh, Russell for, for the fastest lab. I feel like the like the top four teams will be so far ahead of everyone that the the driver that's last of the top eight or top seven, if if Perez is not showing up, uh, is gonna pit for, for new tires at the end, like Hamilton did, uh, I think, in Monaco. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's fair, that's fair. Least impressive to you. Now, we picked Cass last time. I'm going to go for the Aston yet again. Um, well, if you think about it, where do you think Aston should finish if they're bang on average weekend? Uh, between 7th and 10th. Like, in top 10, both of them? Uh, no, no, uh, but at least one of them. So around like P9 to P12? Yeah, no, I think that that is not average. Uh, you know, average, average for them. Uh, yeah. When you, when you think no, about it... Yeah, but, uh, they are the fifth quickest team, right? Well, uh, on the, of, from the course of the, in, uh, like the first eight races, they probably are the fifth quickest team, but recently... They haven't really been shining, honestly. They, I, I, don't, I don't think they got any points in Monaco. They got, uh, well, two points from Stroy and Imola. Before that, Miami both DNF, I think, or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, so I'm not very, I don't thinking that whenever Aston, Aston will need to have get, a pretty I bad weekend. I don't think they'll get any points this weekend. That's, that's fair, but if they still finish like P11 and P12, I still don't feel right, like it's an impressive team. That's but fine. I, I think they'll do bad. Okay. This is just, they need to have a really bad weekend. That's, let's put it like that. They need to have a bad I think, weekend. I think, I think they're getting P11, P12 is quite a significant failure. Like, they need to have Monaco bad right. minimum because that was like their most recent race before that. They always say well, Alonso out in Q1 yeah, and Imola as so well. different than any other race. Yeah, it, it, when, it, when it comes to the recent races, I just don't feel like Aston is can, like a straight up top five. Look, look, I, I, I might lose team, I might lose it, uh, you, and you'll get game points on. So but if if there's like if it's like straight up the least impressive team that you get a point, but I just I don't want to say that uh, uh, this the bar is high uh, or if the bar is low, should I say that they really need to have a bad weekend in order for me to acknowledge the point that's what i wanted to say because yeah i'm just not very uh, I'm just, i just haven't been impressed by aston recently like this entire season okay they were in the in the fight with merck and uh, mclaren but then just they just yeah they brought upgrades and they went fell backwards just like last year so yeah mm. hey, they were quick in canada last year so fair uh, they were indeed, but that was like their last weekend before their their fall off in performance. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. my my least person team. Um, yeah, there's a team that's bringing upgrades, uh, namely Williams. Uh, they're expected to be very good in Canada, uh, based on their car characteristics. Obviously, last year, album like P seven. Uh, so, um. You know, pretty enough to have a really bad weekend to contradict that and to get lazy person team based on the expectations you I have of them. 
Uh, What's your expectations for this weekend? Obviously, I have all got points. The, well, the okay. least impressive team is essentially both them. Uh, actually, I am. Uh, there need to be the bottom two team. Like uh, we have guaranteed okay. guaranteed Sauber for for the for the slowest team, but they need to be like the ninth quickest. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. So yeah, Sergeant uh, confirmed out in Q one. Alban barely gets into Q two and uh, like stuff like that. Like, just nowhere near the points. Just not a very and impressive. Alban still gets into Q two because you know, yeah, this is Alban every there. race this season. To be fair, if Alban get, gets knocked out in Q one, that's. Uh, a very good thing for me, but yeah, it's up for well, interpretation. Just the race, yeah. Yeah. I just think they're so quick in a straight line, so it's a risk. It's a risk. Yep. Yep, I um, like to risk. Okay. <laughs> As you can see my, uh, my other predictions, I like to risk. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, least impressive driver. I am going to go for. I know why he's calling out to me. I'm going to go Daddy Rick. Uh, yeah, he's just calling out to me. I don't know why. Uh, it's one of those where I think he could like do really well and come like, you know, one of those random fourths he gets. Uh, or he could do really badly and finish like 16. Yeah, pretty average Ricardo weekend that you explained or is described. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think he's gonna be the least impressive driver. Yeah, I know I, I have no high expectations of Ricardo, but it's a pretty safe pick there. That's yeah, you can just you you can outperform so much that it puts Daniel in a worse position. There's a lot of expectations though. Yeah, a good pick there from you. Very strategic one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Again, it just came to the top of my head, so I'm not sure it's strategic, but... My I impressive driver. I actually don't know. I'm going to go with science and then pure vibes that I always go for. Yep. Based on my predictions... Uh, well, you predicted you can fit. Well, bad in qualifying and uh, coming in uh, P5 while your teammate is winning the race. Yeah, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Uh, I, I can see where you're coming from there. I'm just... Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, my most impressive team... <laughs> hmm. The strange one, really. Uh, I'm going to counter you and put Williams. <laughs> okay. I think they will have an impressive weekend. Again, lots of straights. Uh, yeah, Avon looked in good form. Sergeant is there. <laughs> Sergeant is there. He exists. That's, that's I, a... think, I think a good weekend for them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, last time you, you picked uh, Williams, uh, like you picked Sergeant, I think, in Miami, and he, he got almost... He got top 10 in, in the sprint, so... He did, we put him third place yeah. on most impressive driver for me, I think. Yeah. I, we had a great debate on whether he was the most impressive driver. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Which he definitely wasn't. It was by far Norris. Yeah, seems like um, you, you kind of bring the luck to Williams, so it's kind of screwing me up, but <laughs> whatever. That's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, not going to go with Aston. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, at the <laughs> night, uh, that would be uh, either very stupid or very clever because they could just uh, randomly turn up and be like, hey, yeah, five, again, so. as we talked about, they did well in this race last season. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Haas for oh, okay, no yeah, apparent okay. reason. Cool. Um, I have no idea why, but I just believe in Haas this we weekend. Put them as a, in a most, in, in, they were the least impressive team last week yeah for both of us so, double dnf really, uh yeah. both disqualifying and qualifying that was a like the worst weekend that's imaginable <laughs> for a team <laughs> that's like yeah who's to blame for the crash line um, I, yeah i did the re I did video myself right so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did so I, I can tell you what I, 
what is my thought process that I feel like Magnuson was more on the of the more to blame, obviously. Uh, yeah, but I, agree. I feel like Perez also had his his fault in it. It's uh, in the incident itself, but also Perez Perez put it, put himself in the position to start next to Kevin Magnuson, and it's obviously not gonna end well for you. His yeah. I I wanna I wanna say something. This is the second year in a row that Hulkenberg has been knocked out because Perez couldn't stop fighting someone else. Because he did the same at um, which uh, the guitar race last season. Oh, okay, it just brought yeah, me yeah, another yeah. set of bad memories. <laughs> oh god, it was like. Hulkenberg was running into points, and then just the crash happened, and yeah, I'm... Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm talking about, and both were Perez, well, not Perez, necessarily, but Perez was the doom of it. I'm just mm. saying, I'm just saying, if I was uh, Nico Hulkenberg, I'd be a bit fuming at the Red Bull driver. Right, uh, my most impressive driver, the reason I was impressed is I had got this in my head. I was going to put Hulkenberg as my least imp- most, uh, sorry, most impressive driver. Okay, I like this because, yeah, um, you're actually mostly correct on these, so hopefully it comes through. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Cheeky Hulkenberg podium in a full wet race wouldn't hurt anyone. Oh, I'd love it. Yeah, I'd that, love it. That's just cool. Um, Delusion at this point, uh, but I'm we we fan over here. Yeah, yeah, we got Norris breaking the curse with the victory. Obviously, Leclerc breaking the Monaco curse. There's one curse left, and that's the Hulkenberg podium curse. So, I'm I'm just saying, uh, it could be a very next race. Honestly, Haas is pretty decent this year. It's obviously uh, getting into Q3 fairly easily in the hands of Nico Hulkenberg. In Q3, if it might rain, we could see another masterclass of a trial like last year. You got P2 in qualifying. I have no idea why or how but that happened. Uh, but yeah, this year has is well, not destroying its starters after on lap two. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, oh, could, I could get the. Uh, well, uh, okay, I'm just. That's, that's, this is not happening. Why am I? You're coping, coping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should, I should stop. Okay. Uh, I actually wanted to go with most president for Hulkenberg, but since we both went in the same track, uh-huh. it wouldn't, wouldn't work the, the best. I feel like if you only put him, look, let's play like this. Uh, if, if you put him and you get a point, you get, you're happy for obviously for getting a point, and I'm happy for Hulkenberg doing well. So yes, it's, yes. it's a, it's a win win scenario. Yes, so, yes. I'm also happy for Hulkenberg doing well, so I'm double winning. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go with someone else there. And I, I kind of alluded to it earlier. I think like, Piastri is gonna have a very good weekend for some reason. But I'm gonna go with him. I'll stick with Piastri. That's, yeah, you, that's fair. That's fair. If you think he's gonna get a pole uh, at this race, I would definitely say yeah, that's a good shot. I have literally zero idea what I want to do for my um, <laughs> weird prediction. I have no idea. I got so lucky with my standing restart last time. Yeah, that was that was a that was a very very good point from you. Um, a crucial one. Well, as well. There was only one as well. There was only. I thought it would be midway through the race. We'd have a little crash. I don't think it'd be right at the start. Yeah. Um, God. Uh, I'm going to say, what have I gone for recently? I've just basically been doing safety cars, so I'm going to go for no cars lapped, which is a risk on this circuit, because it is not very long. So I think no cars lapped is a, uh, a, is a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, that does mean if someone crashes, it doesn't count, right? Yeah, I guess. That's, you think yeah. that's not weird enough? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all right. I can allow it, definitely. I have, I have no issues. Um, if if people just... crash, I'm not counting that as being lapped. 
say DNF. Yeah, always said DNFs don't count as as, as slap. That's yeah, yeah. It's obvious, but yeah, I, I'm the yeah, same as you. I have, I have no idea what I'm gonna pick. Yeah, see, uh, I've just no idea with this race. I was thinking about something with the rain, but it's quite tricky. Okay. I'm... Oh, no, that's. Ah. Uh... I did think of one just then, but I don't think I should. But I should go for it. All right. My cruel prediction is a red flag caused by someone um, having a, a conversation with the wolf champions, obviously, in the last yeah, chicken. Yeah. That is a big one, that's a big yeah, one. That's, that's pretty bold, but also something that you could see happening, so I'm, I'm still, I'm still going to go for it. My second wacky one was um, race start gets delayed by rain. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I, I, I could give you actually thing. like two points for that because, yeah, it's, oh, it feels very, very. It's, yeah, it's, it's just so risky, though. I feel like no car slap is like a, almost a guaranteed point as well because it just feels like so. so oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, we're tired of points. We, are, we shouldn't be conservative right now, but instead, we're like both thinking. Well, at least on my side, I'm okay, taking quite a big risks. So, yeah. Hey, look, it's for the World of Champions for a reason. It's not that big of a risk. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, that's it for for the predictions. We managed to do it in like 50 minutes, I think. Nice. Uh, yeah, almost 50 minutes. So good from us. Uh, we kept it. Very long, but it's still on there now. <laughs> okay, um, but there were there were a lot of talking points, obviously, and the we're kind of excited for the Grand Prix as well, uh, as we have, well, uh, hopefully some fight uh, for the top position. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Canadian Grand Prix, and I'm I'm actually looking for for the battle for the win for the first time in a while. Yeah, your last thoughts. Uh. I hope Lewis Hamilton wins. <laughs> okay, okay, that's. I don't know which, which one is more, uh, more copium, the Hulkenberg podium or Hamilton win. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'd say Benica Hulkenberg podium just because he hasn't done that yet. Yeah, probably. Hamilton literally has the most race wins. That's true, but on the other hand, his really last well. win, his last win is from twenty twenty one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a while since we. His last win should be at the Derby, am I right? Um. Yep. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> it should be his last victory, but according to the statistics, it's the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Because, yep, yeah, uh, we had a very very peaceful race where nothing happened in twenty twenty one at the end of Derby year, so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't think anyone remembers Abu Dhabi twenty twenty one. It's like a very forgettable race. Like it's very boring. No. Nothing happened. So I think it's yeah. maybe the biggest race in F one history. Yeah, well, the surely not, surely not. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we can wrap this up. Uh, if we don't have anything to say, so no, I, yeah, yeah, no, no. All right. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this video again. Uh, we're back together, we're both. Uh, relatively healthy, hopefully, and yeah, we're we're back in for well, uh, juicy title fight. As we're both tight on points, hopefully it's gonna be that this close. Uh, calm middle of the season in F one, and yeah, uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from us moving forward. And until next time, see ya. Bye. Again. Did you forget? I said bye. <laughs> you forgot. Oh, peace. God damn it. <laughs>